Welcome everybody to part 9 of my Unity VR guide. Today, we'll be going over how to make doors and drawers. We'll cover how to make a door, how to prevent unwanted physics interactions between interactables and ourselves, and how to make drawers that open and close. If you haven't been following this series, no worries. Every part is modular and can be done independently from all the others. Just download the GitHub project provided below, open up the project, and go to the corresponding scene to follow along. If you like a written tutorial, you can also find one in a link below as well. Opening up the project and going to the right scene, which is going to be this part 9, doors and drawers, we are going to be greeted with this scene. Imagine that, doors and drawers. Uh, and if you wanted to use these assets or look at some different ones, these are actually from some developer or artist known as Alstra Infinite, and I'll provide the links to that below in the description. You should definitely check it out because these are pretty nice free assets that they offer. Besides that, we have our locomotion system with a continuous move provider and a snap turn provider. And on the XR origin, again, we have our ray interactors as well as direct interactors on our left and right hand controllers. So let's kick things off by learning how to make a door open in VR. And so if we open up the door here, ha ha ha, what a great pun, we have a door frame that has these three components to it with colliders on them. And then we have a door body, which consists of the body itself. And then two door handles, one in the front and one in the back. And they also have colliders. So the first question we have to ask ourselves is how do we make this door open? Well, I think a good way to start is by making it a grab interactable. So let's go ahead and click the door body. We don't want to do it on the door itself because that includes the frame. So we don't want to open the frame with the door, you know? So let's start by adding XR grab interactable to it. And that's also going to add a rigid body. And for the rigid body, let's make it continuous dynamic. That's just gonna make sure if we move the door quickly that it's going to register collisions with it correctly or a little more accurately. And then on movement type, instead of instantaneous, let's have it be velocity tracking. We want it to kind of mimic the physics of, you know, if we swing the door open and let it go, it's going to maintain that velocity instead of just being instantaneous uh, with our hand. Now, before we start up the scene and test things out, right now it's using the door body as the collider to grab the door and we want it to use these handles. So we come down here where the colliders are in XR grab interactable, add these plus signs, and then we're gonna drag these door handles in and start up the scene and see what we have. Pressing play and grabbing the door handle, you'll see that the door's not really acting like how we need it to. It's kind of just flying everywhere. So let's fix that. So in order to fix the door from flying everywhere, we need to limit where it can actually move. And one way we can do that is by adding something called a hinge joint. And I'm gonna go ahead and add that component and explain it. So essentially a hinge joint's going to act like a door hinge. And so we can use this angular limit and we can move this kind of anchor point that is right here around where we want it to rotate. So we need this kind of pointing upwards and we need it to be about here. So I'm gonna enter in some values really quick. All right, so let's go over some of these changes. So for the anchor positioning, I adjusted this and that's gonna kind of put it in the right position. I kind of want it rotating around this middle section. Uh, and also I changed the axis, so it's not rotating on the X axis or the Z axis. We want it rotating on the Y, so it's pointing upwards. And last, right now how it's set, it can actually rotate 360 degrees right here from this point. And we wanna limit that, so we just click use limits and we have these toggles that we can adjust and move but instead of doing that i'm just going to type it in here and i'm going to put it at negative 120 so what i'm doing here is we are going to be grabbing this handle and kind of walking through or pushing the door open which is kind of what you expect so let's press play and see what we have and just like that we can grab the door handle we can walk through this door we can shut the door there we go we got a working door 
Now, there's one last thing I want to point out with our door here, and that's the fact that the colliders are a little misleading. See, you'll see that I've moved the collider in a little bit, and that's to allow the door to swing inwards, and it will remove some of the jaggediness when we go to open the door. So when you go and want to create this yourself, you're creating colliders, just keep that in mind uh, so you don't run into any problems there. All right, and so now we have a working door, but there's one thing I want to point out as we are moving along here is this interactable ball that we have. So we have the continuous locomotion system going, and you'll notice if you are using that while grabbing the ball, you can actually launch yourself uh, around the map, which is pretty disorienting and something we don't want. So to fix that, we are going to change a few things. So starting off, we are going to take this ball and change it to a new layer. And I added a few layers here. I have an interactable layer and an interactable ignore ray layer. Uh, but for this one, we're just going to make it interactable. And then for the XR origin, we are going to change that to body. And you know what? It's not really important that it changes for the children. We just want to make sure the character controller is not colliding with this ball. And finally, we have to change the physics settings here. So we come into here and you can turn these on and off. So this is the body intersection and we're making sure that it's not interacting with interactables or interactable ignore ray. And now when we start up the scene, if we're using continuous movement and we grab the ball and kind of you know, collide it with ourselves, we are no longer being thrown around, which is great. All right, so our locomotion system's working correctly. Now let's figure out how to make these drawers work. So if we click on this and look at different components here, uh, you have this drawer at the very tippy top here, and that's gonna have a mesh collider. So that'll cover the outside of the drawer. And then we have a top drawer, a bottom drawer, and the drawer back. Now the drawer back is just a collider that I have here for when we do make this slideable, when it slides in and out, it's just gonna prevent it from flying out the back there. And let's, yeah, dive into this. We have the bottom part of the drawer, we have a side, we have a side, back, front, and the handle that we're gonna grab onto. So we've mapped out the drawer, let's get it working. And I'm gonna start by using the top drawer. So like before, we're gonna make it a XR grab interactable. And again, it adds the rigid body, which I'm gonna change to continuous dynamic as well as velocity tracking. Next, we need to limit the direction in which we are pulling the drawer right now. If we grabbed it, it would just attach to our hands like any other object. And we are going to use something called a configurable joint. So I'm going to go ahead and add that component. And what this is, is it's kind of like your choose your own adventure of joints. It would allow you to do essentially any kind of thing that you'd want from a joint. It all depends on how we customize it here. So let me customize this really quickly. All right, and let's run through the changes that I've done here. So starting off, we have the anchor position. I, I just want to make sure that it's kind of center of the object. And then finally, the axis. Since this can be customized and go in any direction that I want, uh, I just left it on the x-axis. You can see that the orange arrow is pointing this way, and it looks like we want to have motion on the z-axis relative to that. And so if we come down here, you can see on the X, Y, and Z motion, I have locked it, I have locked it, but since we want it to move on the Z axis, I've made it limited. And then finally, we have angular motion, which I've locked all these for all three because we don't want it rotating. And finally, for linear limit, I have set it to 0.4. And so the limit here is gonna say on the Z axis, it can go 0.4 forwards and backwards. And we don't want it going backwards, but again, that is stopped by this collider right here, the drawer back. And so if we start up the scene now, let's see what we have. And as you can see, we can grab the drawer, but it's a little bit jaggedy. It's not really working correctly. So let's see if we can fix that. In order to fix this, I'm going to actually move some things around. So originally we had the XR grab interactable on the top drawer, but I'm going to now remove it. And I found a better way is to put it on the handle itself. And we need to, it's a, given us a rigid body again, so we're gonna change that to continuous dynamic as well as velocity tracking, don't forget that. And what we need to do from here is add something called a fixed joint. And what the fixed joint is going to do is we put a rigid body here, so we're gonna use the top drawer 
And it is going to say, all right, whatever joint is on the top drawer attached to that rigid body, we're just going to go with that, even though you're grabbing this handle. And that tends to fix it quite well. The last thing I like to play with is this spring and damper. And you might want to experiment yourself. I found I like a spring of, eh, you know what, let's try one this time. And a damper of about 10 for me. But this is where you need to experiment and see what feels right to you. So with that, let's start it up and see what we have. And just like that, we can grab the drawer. It's sliding out smoother and yeah, things kind of work. If you want, in the project, there's still a drawer left to implement. But besides that, I appreciate you stopping by. Leave me a like if you found this helpful, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye